Welcome back to the Weekend Report, 97.1 FM Talk, Tony Colombo, Chris Arps, and now, as I mentioned in that last segment, the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent himself, joins us on the show. It is great to talk with you. Ted, how are you doing? I'm doing so good at stupid, Tony. <laughs> Ray and everybody out there who's, who's addicted to truth, logic, common sense, and positive spirit and energy. I'm here to serve you. Ted, you really got to get more enthusiasm going there. You're just way too too even keel. Oh, Chris, let me let me set the table here, if I may. Okay. Um, I don't I don't mean to take over, but I know you guys are your elders, so uh, <laughs> I know you give me the benefit of the doubt. So I I am energized. It's a beautiful spring morning here on our ranch in Texas. We have acres and acres of wildlife paradise. We work on the habitat. I've been out cutting hay fields this morning. Throw in seed, this really killer Primo's product where you just have to throw seed as the water levels recede, and it just blows up in this super nutritious vegetation for the wildlife. And then I had some friends out here the other day that were hunting Axis deer. This is an imported animal back in the 1930s from India and Pakistan, and there are more Axis deer in Texas than there are in India and Pakistan because as hunters... We value the ground to support that wildlife, and we value the sport and the fun and the trophy and the meat. It's the best medicine in the world. And this gal hit one the other night, and it's one of the heartbreaks of hunting because as humans, we fail on occasion, and she didn't make a killing shot. So my enthusiasm this morning is that I found that buck. I saw the antlers swaying ab above the hayfield, and I have my Catahoula Happy, my German Shepherd K9 uh, Coco, and my Little Yellow Lab ha Sadie. And when I saw those antlers swaying, the dogs, here they go. They <laughs> <laughs> it was just a cacophony for dog howl. And point being is that the dogs bathed the deer up. I was able to get a bullet in it. And I recovered this magnificent stag called the young lady and she was just emotional because she was heartbroken that she didn't kill it cleanly but a day later it was still up and at him fighting the dogs i thought my dogs were going to get shish kebab the boy was, they were valiant and so this energy you guys didn't do this this morning i, <laughs> I you love it imagine the adrenaline it's a unique adrenaline when you kill your own food you manage the ground for that production of wildlife, not just, you know, meat animals, but songbirds. And there's some uh, uh, cranes and herons out here, a bunch of owls and a hawk, a, 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 a peregrine falcon went down this morning. So this is the nature life that I live hands yeah. on. I just washed the blood off my hands of this magnificent stag that not only will feed my buddy's family, but I'm going to take a couple of back straps off. <laughs> but we donate, gentlemen, the Nugent family, just the Nugent, my wife with her bow and arrow and myself and my son, uh, Toby, and my daughter, Sasha. We, we donate tons of pure, natural, delicious, renewable, organic venison to soup kitchens and homeless shelters every, every year. So there's so much wildlife, and you have to harvest the surplus to make room for the ponds that will be blowing up here any day now. So this is the life I live. How could you not be gonzo enthusiastic mm -hmm. about this kind of complete participation in God's miraculous mm -hmm. creation, uh, renewable creation, which brings us to the culinary celebration of the ultimate meal, which is venison? And ducks and geese and squirrels and rabbits and coons and, and, and cougar and bear and elk and all the animals that we kill for our dinner table. It's the best diet in the world. And anybody that hasn't eaten wild game, their taste buds have no idea the excitement available to the uh, culinary, hands on, environmentally perfect hunting lifestyle. So I think that kicks off. What you guys are yeah. saying, Every, from the minute I get up in the morning to the time I go to bed at night, all the good things I do, all the science-based wildlife management, the, the wildlife environmental hands-on conservation, gentlemen, it's all illegal in Michigan. Everything, huh. 
too. My, my shotgun and my, my rocks are felony in Michigan. Shooting a, a raccoon with, with before the, the raccoon season, uh, eating doves. There's more doves produced in Michigan than all the other game birds combined, but they call it a songbird. That's just a lie. So I live in Texas, which I think is, along with Oklahoma and South Dakota and North Dakota and a few other places, is the last real we the people freedom in the country. I have a quick question for you. You have a wonderful cookbook, Kill It and Grill It, which is very, you know, kind of we have that same thought that there's more to wild game than fried and sausage, which is a great comfort food. But I was just kind of curious, is there a wild game dish out there that made you just say, wow? You know, I got to tell you, Ray, the answer to that is yes. And I'm going to tell you this. I've said this in numerous interviews, and I'm going to say it again because one and one will always equal two, and the answer to your question will always be the same. And I, I alluded to it a moment ago. Those that don't eat wild game and handle it properly, and it, to handle it properly is just, you have to think. Think, man, think. Yeah. Practice with your weapon so that you are as efficient and responsible as can be. Because how you kill the animal will determine its palatability, it, it, it's, its taste, and its quality. So you kill them clean, you, you clean them immediately, you hose out any body fluids and blood, you let it hang and drain, except bears and rabbits and hogs you can't age, but all other game, all fowl, all big game you age extensively in a cooler like we have here or in cold weather up in Michigan. So the answer to your question is all of the above. If I cook a mallard for you, by the way, in my world, fast food is a mallard. <laughs> if I cooked a duck for you guys, I'd have to, I'd have to beat you off of me. You want to kiss me. It, I, our average meal, and obviously we eat a lot of backstrap from white-tailed deer, fallow deer, psycho deer, axis deer, um, elk, uh, black buck antelope, all the different herbivores, all the different cervids. The way we handle the backstrap, which is that loin on the, that runs along the backbone, which would be the, 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 the top of the ribeye, with filet mignon. Um, love the French. Love the French. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, love horse meat when I'm in Paris. That's why I don't go to Paris anymore. I ride horses. I don't eat them. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> I, 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 I get off the track here, but it's all, refer it's all uh, referencial, uh, references. I'm telling you, squirrel, it, all it eats is nuts and berries and buds. The, the content of squirrel meat is the most delicious stuff in the world when handled properly. Grouse, a rough grouse, it's candy when you handle it properly. The, the fatty skin on a duck, it's candy. And every restaurant I go to around the world, the chefs know who I am. They know I'm a, a hunting Fool, and they always come out, whether it's Wolfgang Puck or Anthony Bourdain, the relationship that we had, they always come out of the, the kitchen to talk to me, and they always exalt and celebrate. The ultimate meal begins with a wild animal, because it's, that's the only, you know, free-range chicken is a pheasant and a grouse. No, there's no such thing as a free-range chicken. It's like bigger cages. And, and grass-fed well, all my animals are living a natural life and minimal adrenaline, except when the tooth, fang, and claw predators pounce. So the, the content of wild game food is the most fun to shop for. It's the most fun to handle, knowing that how respectfully you handle it will determine how delicious it, it, how delicious it is. And then when you cook over natural wood coals, and good olive oil, and good seasonings, simple seasonings. I'm telling you, our average meal, Ruth Chris wishes she could serve a meal mm -hmm. like she I cook every night. So it's all good, but we eat a lot of backstrap, and there's no bad way to prepare backstrap, as long as it's rare to medium rare. Have you ever done venison tartare with the tenderloins? You know, I have not, but I, I know it's doable, and I've had some uh, tartare and some of the... Uh, the high-end restaurants around the world. 
It and is, they all come out. They always want to give me their best, their best concoction. They always like to impress the Motor City uh, madman. But no, we've never done that. But I'll tell you, sometimes when I singe my venison backstraps over glowing coals, it's not just pink inside, it's bleeding. <laughs> so it's uh, rare, but we haven't done the tartare, but I know it's doable, and I've heard people rave about it. You know, you can tell you're talking to Ted Nugent is when you can go from uh, rifle and bow hunting to John Brennan's a hippie to a uh, cookbook discussion all within five minutes. This is what I love about talking to uh, Ted Nugent. Um, Bobby Whitehead told me to tell you and Shemaine hello yesterday when I was talking to him. Can you tell us how you became friends with Bob and started writing for Outdoor Guide magazine? Well, I just texted Bob this morning while I was literally loading up the Axis buck. I got this unit on the front of my, my off-roader where it uses the winch to lift up this 300-pound animal. And you can imagine the emotion and the adrenaline of the dogs almost getting killed by this beast and me finishing it off. And the, the buck is, you know, in his last throes of life. And I know that it's a gift and the girl's going to be excited that I found it. So I've just a whirlwind, a tsunami of humanity and, 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 and sensations. And then I, my phone goes, brrr, and while I'm, while I'm winching this body into the, into the basket, I look and it's, it's Bob. And he, he uh, sent me a text that he's on a new journey in life, a new adventure. And I immediately, while I'm winching, I'm winching with my left hand and I'm texting back to Bob in my right hand. He is my blood brother. He celebrates the spirit of conservation, reverential use of the precious renewable wildlife resources. And that really, that's why our show, it's been the highest rated show on Outdoor Channel and public television back in the day uh, for 31 years now, wow. Um, Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild on Outdoor Channel because I exude the passion and the, dare I say, intellect reverence for resource stewardship, environmental management to produce quality air, soil, and water, and inevitably balance biodiversity and wildlife. So that, that's Bob's mantra. And he has always told me, he probably told you, and dare I say, and you go to my Facebook any day you want and watch the millions of people that might have been an anti-hunter animal rights goofball until they hear me talk, until they hear it explained in simple terms, the renewability, yep. the, 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 the anti-hunter, many non-hunters have never seen the, re the relationship between quality air, soil, and water management that will produce quality wildlife productivity. Yep. And the yep. reverence for that productivity is the wise use that includes garlic and butter. And so I may <laughs> articulate this in a fashion, and I, I think it's because I've been clean and sober for 71 and a half years, and I'm actually able to form syllables, which is unique in the world of rock and roll. <laughs> and so Bob and I have had a communication brotherhood to get that word out in a world that in the 60s and 70s was becoming so disconnected from nature responsibility that they now, now think that a squirrel has rights and that if you stopped hunting, that the animals would just keep reproducing and have plenty of place to live, which is, of course, absurd. And if you stop hunting and fishing, people don't understand what would happen to the lakes and the land and how dirty and polluted things would become because it's the outdoorsman that keeps it clean and, and is the watchman uh, looking out for, for all that Hallelujah. Stuff. Yeah, I, I tell you what, if you were worried, don't be. The Motor City Madman is still going strong. Yeah. Ted Nugent, thank you so much for your time today. I hope that we get a chance to talk to you again really soon. We, we all have a million more questions, uh, so I hope we get a chance to talk to you again down the line. Well, my pleasure, guys. I love talking about the things that bring me quality of life, and, and we all share that, that, that prioritization. So Ray and Christopher and Tony, God bless you all. And thank Becky for setting this up because yes. I know yes. help us without her. She's um, the brains of the operation. So yeah. Before you came on, Chris and Tony, I was celebrating with Ray that me, Ted Nugent, 
who's limited technologically to crowbars, machine guns, <laughs> sharp edged instruments, and guitars. I'm pretty good with guitars. But I got on Zoom all by myself. As well. Hey, really? congratulations. I thought your assistant <laughs> set it up for you. <laughs> but I'd be happy awesome. to join you guys. I'd love to join you guys anytime. Get with my amazing assistant, Linda Peterson, who's the best of the best, like everybody in my world. And I love to talk about these things. And I think you will admit, and again, go to my Facebook and, and see the celebration of truth, logic, common sense, goodwill, decency, positive spirit, energy, uh, empathy, uh, a compassion, a caring, and more important than any of that, really cocky humor. Really the greatest <laughs> humor in the world on my Facebook. But I love talking about these things that many people have lost touch with. So thank you for that opportunity. Carry on for doing it. And I'd like to think that what we just enjoyed here was like an Uncle Ted electronic campfire. And I'd love to do it again as soon as you guys well, can. I, I tell you what, before we go, and I'm going to invite myself. To, Ray has a uh, property in Missouri with uh, hogs on it. I've never been hunting in my life. So if you ever come to Missouri, I would love for the four of us to uh, go hog hunting, wild yeah. hog hunting, and get my Fair first hogs. hunting experience out of yeah, the way. Never hunted Fair in my hogs. life. Feral hogs is <laughs> a big is. problem. That's yeah, the feral. ultimate hog gun right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Glock 10 millimeter with a hundred and <laughs> you know, semi jacket at hollow point doing about 13, 50 feet a second. But gentlemen, please celebrate with me. Huntthevote.org. Huntthevote.org. We are going to galvanize the heretofore untapped voting army for God, family, country, freedom, constitution, and hunting, fishing, trapping, conservation lifestyle. We're going to finally get these apathetic people to vote. Huntthevote.org. We're already on our way, and we're going to make a difference in the future, starting in this November, that we're going to hold what I talked about earlier, that constitutional fire to the feet of our elected employees. Huntthevote.org. Dot org. It's going to make all the difference. We did it in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania in 2016. We're going to do it nationwide this year. Great stuff. Ted Nugent, Excellent. thank you so much for your time. I hope we get a chance to talk again real, real soon. Next time I'm going to put, I'm bringing a guitar next time and I'll just drive you nuts. Hey, we'll take yeah. the concert. Amen. Love it. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. Thank you. All right, that's that's you guys. Live it up. God bless yep. America. Be God safe, be well, be happy, be secure, be cocky, be rocking, and be hopeful. <laughs> Amen. We'll talk to you soon, Ted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Zoom like you mean it, gentlemen. <laughs>